I'm Emma from Women's Health Clinic and today we're going to do a little bit of an overview about the pelvic floor and the importance of pelvic floor exercises. So in terms of the pelvic floor, I'm giving advice as a women's health nurse. Um, all of the nurses in our clinic have different aspects of uh, women's health training and we all come from different perspectives. So this is just overview advice and we would always suggest following a pelvic floor examination, if necessary, that a referral towards the GP or um, private physio or physiotherapy through the hospital may be recommended. So this is a broad overview and the sort of conversation we would have in clinic. So the pelvic floor, this model's not brilliant, but the pelvic floor are a group of muscles that are on the pelvic floor. So their aim is to support structures, so things like you know preventing things like stress incontinence. So think of it as a hammock going from front to back but also, as you can see internally, we've got muscles that go underneath backwards and forwards as well. So what they're designed to do is to support all the pelvic organs, so preventing things like stress incontinence. So they're very important and just like any muscle in our body, they are prone to signs of ageing, from uh, muscle weakness. Um, and also, because we're women, we have physiological changes, so if we do have children, then there's also pressure on that. And it is a little bit of, um, little bit of a misconception that if you have a baby through the, a, a caesarean, that your pelvic floor um, is going to be safer than if not. And if you think about it, you know, if we're having an episiotomy, so a cut from the front to the back, then we're cutting through the pelvic floor from underneath. Um, but also that pressure of either having the extra weight on because we've put a bit of weight on or from having uh, born a baby as well. So at various points in our life, you know, women may present with symptoms or worsening symptoms of stress, urinary incontinence. Less common but still quite debilitating is faecal incontinence. Some of these can be attributed to the general ageing process, but also depending on birth trauma, amount of babies, weight, menopause, all of those sort of things. And when we're in clinic, these are the sort of questions we'll be asking about your history, particularly if you're coming for the new V treatment. So that the majority of patients that come to us for the new V procedure particularly, tick one or more boxes. So increasing stress incontinence, difficulty in getting to the bathroom in time, um, things like urge incontinence, so they're putting the key in the door, really struggling to get there in time, concerned about the smell, leakage, all of those sort of things. And for some ladies, particularly as they get older, then you know, starting to get things like more like urine infections. There was a recent study done uh, professionally in a medical journal that looked at the amount of women that they studied 2,000 women and they looked at the, the amount of them that had had actual pelvic floor exercise training by healthcare professionals. And over 60% of those ladies hadn't had any formal guidance, um, regardless of whether they had issues or not. They also looked at the medical professionals that are in things like urology, gynae, sexual health, and the formalised training for pelvic floor wasn't um, a standard for, for many of them. This means that when we're going through our life and we're being told to do our pelvic floor, you know, you wouldn't go to a gym, um, just give them the keys and get on with it. You would have a little bit of training, a bit of background, and that's part of what we do as part of our consultation every time. So when patients come to our clinic, always have a full consultation before treatment anyway. And one of the aspects we look at is the pelvic floor. So what regime have you got? Are you actually doing anything? Has anybody actually taught you? What are the symptoms? So is it stress incontinence? Is it a prolapse feeling, whatnot? Before we do any treatment, we'll do an examination. Obviously we're doing this with the nurse's hat on rather than a physio, but we have enough, all of us are trained to a certain level in, in, in pelvic floor examinations. What we're looking at is Thinking of the, the hammock from the front to the back, if we're just doing this, so we're squeezing, which is a lot of people feel is what the pelvic floor squeeze is, then that's only really working at one part of that muscle. If I was at the gym, if I did that exercise, it's very similar but very different to me doing a low version of it because we're getting a different range of motion. And that's what we're trying to do because when we've had babies, what we tend to find is we get a bit of, depending on birth history and whatnot, is that we get a bit of top wall, so anterior weakness. And that can actually cause a little bit of a prolapse or loss of volume to that wall. And often what we'll find is instead of the urethra, the weed tube sitting back here, it'll often be a bit more prominent. And what we're trying to do is to get that exercise to keep moving that. The other thing to remember is that the vagina doesn't have many nerve endings. So some people find that when they're doing their squeezes, they're not sure if they're effective. 
Um, and I've always said to patients, it's always better to do something badly than nothing really well. And that's the advice that we would give. So when we're doing our pelvic floor examination, we're using gloved fingers to feel, look at the tissue. We want to see what you've got, what you're doing. And like I say, a lot of people are quite good at doing a grip, but we want that lift. And what we will be able to do is to give some guidance on that. There are lots of different gadgets and gizmos out there that can help. But the problem with those is that what's suitable for one lady might not be suitable for the next. And that's part of the clinical um, assessment that we're making because you don't want to spend a few hundred pounds on something that's really useful for somebody who's had a forceps delivery and not elsewhere. Our recommendation is to think of those small squeezes and long squeezes, but also remembering to release the muscles completely because if I just keep doing this, I'm only getting a small range of movement. But if I relax, and bring back up again and then do the long and the short and again this is something that we can do an assessment on. There are a few different ways to um, to work your pelvic floor and we'll be able to advise you at, at the level that we're sort of trained at. Generally think about it being on a ladder, you don't start at the top and work down, you would start at the bottom and work up. Your vagina's free, it's portable, it's with you all the time. So getting a good regime is important. The advice that we often give in clinic is think of something you would do a couple of times a day. Brushing your teeth, making a cup of tea, driving to and from work, whatever. Something that you naturally do regularly without fail and try and build that regime in. Um, we're looking at doing small squeezes and those longer squeezes as well and alternating those. And what you'll find is if you don't think you're doing them that well is do them anyway and then we will reassess when you come at different points and you can always book in for a consultation with the nurses anyway. Um, the recommendation is 10 to 15 squeezes once or twice a day and what you will find is that muscle memory will build up quite quickly so when it's quite difficult to, to think about it and coordinate it, you know, as with any new task, the more the time goes by the easier that will be and you will build up that what we call muscle memory. If we find that you're not progressing as well as we would like, or we think that uh, other intervention may be required, then we can look at recommending simple over-the-counter devices that you can use, and we demonstrate some of those, things like an educator, or a TENS machine, or weighted balls, or whatever. Um, at that point, if we're still not getting quite where we need to be, or we feel that you need some more support, then we can more than happily refer you to uh, gynaecology, urology, or to a physio appointment um, through the NHS by making a referral through, through yourself, uh, through us. There's a few gadgets and gizmos that you can use that are really easy to work with. So one of them, and we'll show a little picture of this, is the NHS Squeezy app. And this is something that you get on any phone, whether it's Android or um, Apple products. You download it, you can set things like bladder diaries in there, you can set exercise regimes. And what it will do is it will send you reminders and then it will take you through them. And again, this is something we can talk about and explore in the clinic based on your case. So hopefully, this is very broad advice because everybody that's seeing this video has got a different history, a different reason why they're getting in touch, different symptoms, different birth histories, gynae, menopause and so on. The way that we work, most of the time that the ladies have come to us is because they're coming for the new V treatment for a variety of symptoms. We've done a lot of videos on these, which you can see. So the process for us is there's a free 20 minute telephone consultation with a member of female nursing team to talk about the reasons that you're getting in touch privately to ascertain your suitability to come in for a consultation. The next stage is you attend for a consultation, which we take a £25 deposit for. 45 minutes is a good long time to have a chat. It gives us time to do that full examination, look at your birthing history, look at your medical history, all of those sorts of things. And then at that point, we would do a pelvic floor examination and give you some, basically some homework to do. It's very important, these muscles, take on a lot of pressure, they take on a lot of weight. By exercising them, there's another happy side effect. So a lot of ladies find that by pumping that muscle that the blood supply stays increased in there. And that's one of the reasons that women find that they have a lack of sensation in the bedroom as we get older, because the muscles lose their volume. We obviously all change shape as well, so our hips don't tend to look like this anymore. Um, if we're putting on weight, that'll put pressure on as well. And then from the new view perspective, it helps us to then target where we need to go to be able to get you to direct your exercises better. And we would suggest, you know, new is good, 
pelvic floor is good, the two together will definitely enhance those results quicker. Um, it doesn't take much to do, it's quite straightforward, quite easy. And like I say, if we've got any concerns or we feel that you would benefit from a greater input from physio, then we can send a referral letter to save you having to make that appointment to try and get that help sooner and easier.